Today is Tuesday, August 20. I'm Pastor Anthony, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Today our text comes from Ephesians 1. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. That's Ephesians 1, the first part of verse 18, and then verses 19 through 21. In that first half of verse 19, following from verse 18, we hear Paul's prayer that we may know in our heart the power of God for us who believe. It has been my increasing sense over these past number of years, probably ever since 2015 or so, that we as Christians in the West have little sense of this power of God. I've said it before, but it is worth saying again and again. Whether in the legalism of progressive justice or the legalism of conservative ethics, both political and church discourse has been shaped by an implicit belief that if any Christian good is going to get done around here, we have to do it ourselves. That is, we have to do it in the strength of our own power. These strong positions of strong stances can betray a belief in a very small impotent God, a God that's functionally dead. The actions of many Christians seem to suggest a belief that it's all up to us now. We believe that we're on our own. From the spiritual angle, I think the smallness of our God and our functional belief in his powerlessness is, more than anything, what has driven the polarization in church and society. We don't believe that there's anybody that can save us anymore. So we think that we have to save the church, that we have to fight the secularists, that we have to save our society and our country, that we have to achieve holiness, that we have to set things right and make justice happen in this world. We, we, we. Through the power of law and policy, the power of our money, the power of our influence, the power of our votes, through any power that we can get our own hands on to use, we ourselves have sought to become the God that we no longer believe in. Aside from lip service, very rarely in these divisive conversations have we bent the knee of our hearts to a power greater than our own. Very rarely have we laid down our powerful coercive armaments and battle-ready defenses and securities and in trust that it is God's power that will fight and win the battle. God's power that will vindicate and save us. If not now, then in the world to come. But very rarely have we held out hope that his power will see us through to a glorious inheritance despite what our eyes can see and our hearts believe. When we lose sight of a big sovereign God, a powerful God, we lose everything. If we no longer believe that God is powerful to act in our lives, in our world and in our church anymore, then we functionally deny that very power that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand. Said differently, a belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ demands belief in a God who powerfully works in our world still today. The power is the same, Paul says. The power of God for us who believe is the same as the power that vindicated Jesus in resurrection life. Do you believe this? Against all the despair, the uncertainty, the fear, the polarization, the violence, the desolations and turmoil of our world and present moment, do you yet believe in God who is powerful to save his people? Believe it. God is on the move. Just like in those days of power when through his mighty strength he raised Christ from the dead. So my prayer is the same as Paul's, that God will once again open the eyes of our hearts to perceive and rest in his mighty power, hope, and calling for us who believe, and particularly 
in these tumultuous moments that we live. As you journey on, go with his blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. <laughs>